To get the entire episode and all our content, look for a podcast of Biblical Proportions on all podcasting platforms. Hello everybody and welcome to a podcast of Biblical Proportions. Episode 7, From Adam to Noah. In this episode we'll go over the 10 lineages that span hundreds and thousands of years, basically connecting the creation to the flood in an effort to tell an imagined prehistory, which biblical scholars have dubbed the primeval stories. Then there's a giant leap forward in time. Instead of proceeding gradually from prehistory to the end of the Bronze Age, the writers of the Bible applied some much needed fast forward. The well-known fast-paced montage over some cool music, the yada yada yada, and here we are together. We'll extract the juicy telling and funny bits from this laundry list of weirdly named characters who are never to be mentioned again. Hi, Omri. Hi, Gil. So just uh, for people to know, uh, we're talking about the part that starts midway through Genesis chapter 4. Yeah. After the part after about the Cain, uh, and Abel. Cain, yeah. Evel, Cain and Evel. And then stretches all the way to the, to the entirety of, 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 of chapter 5. Chapter 5 reads to me like a standalone story that says uh, from the beginning how the world was uh, created. Just... Again, so it's like narratively, it looks embedded in it. This is the book of the generations of Adam in the day that in the day, in the day that God created man in the likeness of God, he made him. And then he said again, uh, male and female, he created them and blessed them and called them Adam. Wait a minute, you, you just told us how the world was created a couple of chapters ago. Why are you repeating yourself so soon? I think that it's because... This was a standalone story that was added as is to the book. After Cain was uh, banished, then we're told about his lineage and his line that is extinct later. Genealogy, the, a lot of uh, theologians use that to calculate the age of the world. <laughs> yeah. So it, I think it's quite admirable that they have a perception that they chose to emphasize prehistory, a time when it's pre-recorded and it, it's something that is reoccurring even in, a, in other religions. And maybe that very, let's say, human. It's like the stories that tell in the Greek stories how we got uh, to have knowledge because someone had to sneak the knowledge out from the gods. These kinds of stories? Yeah, different? exactly. Okay. Or the fact that uh, mm -hmm. before the gods that we have now, Zeus and uh, mm -hmm. Athena and stuff like that, you had titans, titans before that. Yes. They ruled before that. Mm -hmm. And we had to beat the titans. to. It's, it's part of uh, their explaining. And there is an explaining here. They try to make a, a direct connection between the listener of the story and the source of the world, of the of Earth, of the universe. So they, they provide a connection, but at the same time, they also provide a safe distance between the magical past and the decidedly non-magical present of the 1000 BCE Eastern Mediterranean people. So it's like, yeah, that happened a long, long time yeah. ago, thousands and thousands of years ago, but you could also say, People back then, they didn't know how old they were. They weren't keeping track. Maybe they were 65. <laughs> and they go, oh, 950 <laughs> years. Right, who the hell knows? I don't know if they knew the exact date of their birthday. They absolutely did not. Even the Romans in Julius Caesar th Caesar's time had trouble calculating the years because they didn't know the leap years mm. and stuff. So yeah. they knew not. They just had seasons. Yeah. They knew. This kind of genealogy is reminiscent of traditions that were used in the area, mm. uh, in the Mesopotamia era, the Fertile Crescent. Uh, the, the people who wrote Gilgamesh and told that, that story, it's mm. like uh, you have uh, ridiculous ages yeah. in prehistory, and the closer you get to the present, more, the more reasonable the ages look. Maybe it's a psychological thing, like as you said, that something is missing in your story you have to go back, way back. And that is when your imagination is uh, free-flowing. Yes. And we can see that their imagination was free-flowing, but very limited because everything mm -hmm. came from Adam. And we'll see later a lot of the 
uh, professions were invented. Profe- ah, professions. A lot yes, of yes. real life professions that yes. we know from today, you know, like a blacksmith, archetype. And those professions were, were very limited to the uh, geology of, uh, yeah. of the geopolitical cultural yes. uh, area. Of that specific time. Yeah. Yes. And Adam knew his wife again. And then they have a second son, Shet, yeah. which, who's called Seth. 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 To me, it sounds like an Egyptian name. And maybe it's only my point. It's only my theory. I don't, I don't think I read it uh, anywhere. Shet. And But it has an explanation in Hebrew why it, she was call, he was called Seth. Because Cain... Shatli yeah. Elohim Zeracher. Given me another seed. Shat. Yeah, guess, and in, bec- it's like Something gave me Hebrew. another seed in my belly in exchange for the one that I lost because Cain murdered my son. Yes. But it's obviously... Not obviously, but it's of, to me, it seems like a foreign name yes. and a local explana- explanation yes. to a foreign name and a very bad <laughs> explanation. <laughs> it doesn't even make sense in Hebrew because shit, it's, it, it's not a commonly used no, uh, no, word. No, no, no. Yeah. But, but this also points to another thing. So shit, that's not a name that we have. But Seth, Seth. it's a name that Jewish people have. You yeah. might think of a specific Seth right yeah. now, <laughs> a famous Seth. And there's another name here on the list, Yared. That's not a Hebrew name that we no. use, but the English version, Jared. Jared. This is the pro- so there are these the archetypes. So Jared, he's the archetype of the nepotistic, uh, corrupt individual. <laughs> Jared. Okay, so, and to Seth, to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Enosh. Enosh. It means human in Hebrew. Now mm. it means human. Maybe back mm. then it was just a name. And Enosh, that's not a popular name. I know someone uh, who named uh, her, her, her son Enosh. That's a beautiful name, yeah. human. Maybe it became less popular because in Hebrew it became the meaning of a human. It's son of Enosh. Literally means son yeah. of Enosh. Ben, ben Enosh. Enosh. Yes. Maybe because of that. Yeah. It, it stopped being a name until the Zionists came and they tried to... Uh, Make no. a renaissance of uh, biblical it's names. Zion, it's the post-Zionists who did that because it means human, so it's not Jewish. Mm. There's something not Jewish about uh. it. She's extreme left-wing. Uh. <laughs> this, this <person. laughs> so then began, at the time of Enosh, then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. Exactly. But in, in, Hebrew, in Hebrew, it's a clear editing job because we said, we said earlier, the source of this story, of this genealogy, is probably from the Northern Kingdom. People who told this particular version of the story, they were probably from the southern part uh-huh. and they worship Yahweh. And in Hebrew, it doesn't from now on the name of the Lord, blah, blah, blah. It's from now on, people started naming Yahweh, Yahweh as that's what it says. the God. The names that are given from the lineage of Adam and Cain and Seth are what you call a theophoric names. The, the names that describe some kind of an action by a god. One example is like Netan Yahu. Yahu is Yahweh. Mm-hmm. Natan is gave. So Yahweh gave. Giveth. Giveth. Netan Yahu. Another example is Hannibal. Hannibal? Hannibal. It, the famous Carthagian uh, who fought the Romans. Mm-hmm. Carthagians, they were Phoenicians. The mm-hmm. people who came from Lebanon of today. Mm. His name is Han. Han. Ah. Chani, which is favored, and Baal, Hannibal, Baal, favored by Baal, Chani Baal. If Hannibal worshipped the god El, the northern god, the Canaanite okay. god, his name would have been Hanan El. Or Hani El. Or Hani El. So here you have Mechuya El, <laughs> El it. giving life maybe, and Metusha El. You have Metuzalech. And you Metushelach. have Metushelach, but before that you have ah. Metushael. Metushael. And I try to figure out what Metu means, except for death. death. <laughs> They died. <laughs> but I think maybe it's my theory. I'm putting it out there. Maybe it's some kind of a reference to the Canaanite god Mot, which is like the god of the afterlife. Ah, Mavet, Mot, so okay. you have Mot and El, and Metushelach. Mot Shalach sent by Mot, maybe. Ah. Metushelach. So Metushelach yeah. is still used today. Not, it's not very common, but it's still used today as a reference for, for somebody very old. Yeah, for long, longevity. You have trees that are named Metushelach. <laughs> 
מתושלח. But take this hypothesis with a grain of salt, I haven't seen it referenced uh, anywhere else. So, but, so, but again, to emphasize the point, the source of the story was northern, was foreign to the people who listened to this particular story that you see in your Bible. It had to be edited in the yes. fact that... The last sentence. The last sentence. It's a clear editing job. <laughs> it has nothing... It, yeah. Without, without, with no context no whatsoever. No context. Yeah. And, but Remember that Yahweh is okay. still here. Remember that he... It, it's not, don't, don't be confused. Yes, even, yes, because, again, Cain, he's uh, more archetypally uh, northern, where they had El and uh, other gods, not, uh, not Yahweh so much as the southern parts. So the, they were the one who put the story to paper and they were incorporating the different stories, but then add, okay, here we started to call on the name of Yahweh, probably worship yeah. Yahweh, because yeah. calling the name of the, of the deity is part yeah. uh, of the worship. So in that line of, of Cain, Cain, first of all, there's uh, something really weird there with uh, Lemech. Yeah. And Lemech, that's also a word not as commonly used now, but somebody who's stupid yeah who's lemech, who who weak and stupid yeah, yeah. A loser or something so he killed it says that he killed someone yeah. who whatever wounded his yeah. ego or something yeah and it's it is written as some kind of a song and it's very unpalatable <laughs> <laughs> it's very difficult even in Hebrew That's why it, it is considered some kind of a song, but it's a very short, short, short song. And also he's like uh, very presumptuous. He's like, okay, so uh, Yahweh said that yeah. if someone uh, kills a uh, kind, then uh, he will... Uh, he will he punish me punish sevenfold. Sevenfold, and I will punish whoever comes to hurt me seventyfold. So I don't know. That's, uh, again, those are the people... It's why it was left in the, the name and the tail. Because I, those I are the no negative... Maybe because those are the people who get extinct. This is the line that, uh, that uh, doesn't continue. But mm. they do contribute to society because you had uh, Yavel, that's a name that we don't use anymore. He's yeah. the first one who has a tent. Yeah. He invented the tent. <laughs> invented the tent. And then Yuval, that's a name that we still use yeah. today, also means like a, a tributary, yeah. something like that. So Yuval, he was the, the first musician. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He played Ubat Ugav Kino, that's violin yeah. today. This is something I'm, I, I bet uh, Eliezer Ben Yehuda decided uh, when yeah. the one who uh, reinvented, re brought back to life ancient Hebrew. So ancient Hebrew... He created modern Hebrew. He created modern, modern Hebrew. And modern Hebrew is... There is no other language on earth that is as close to its ancient roots as modern Hebrew is to ancient Hebrew. There is also no language on, in history that was revived. And yes. Spoken right. to in... 2000, 3,000 years ha later, yeah. Yeah, after like, 2,000 years, nobody spoke Hebrew. Yeah. So it's like frozen in time, so it's yeah. really close. So he went uh, looking through the Bible to find uh, words that he could uh, change the meaning or use the yeah. meaning because it says violin, ugav. Ugav, that's like the organ. Yeah, it's an, ugav is organ. It's organ. Organ. So in a they, church. Yeah, in a church. So they didn't have church. <laughs> no, they didn't they have, did have organs. They didn't have violins. I think they had some kind of a primitive uh, strings attached to a stick. They had, um, how do you call it? Harps. Yuv Ju so Yuval is Jubal for some reason. Okay. Yeah. So he was the father of all such as handled the harp and organ. Mm. But this, it wasn't an organ. It wasn't an organ. <laughs> organ <laughs> wasn't invented. <laughs> this is a long time ago. In, six, time in ago. 1700 uh, England, they had organs. They had organs. <laughs> exactly. To get the entire episode and all our content, look for a podcast of Biblical Proportions on all podcasting platforms.